Hello and welcome to another Game Nexus Arcade video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Brave Fighter Fighters released in 1999 on the Sega Hikaru Arcade hardware. Uh, there's not too much that's interesting here in the test mode. You'll see there's like an input output test, game, game assignments, it's just uh, time bonus difficulty, water drainage difficulty, nothing too amazing. You can test your sensors and everything, but as far as this game goes, there really isn't too much as far as adjustments go. And let me just go ahead and put the top cover of the uh, case back on since you kind of need to take that off in order to do anything here. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom out here to kind of show you what's going on as to how we got this uh, crazy device working. Now, I'm going to just take the camera off the tripod a minute because that will probably be the easiest way to do it. But here is the Hikaru PCB itself. You'll see I was just pressing those buttons in the back there in order to activate things. Right on top of the PlayStation 4 is a Raspberry Pi 3B board with a serial to USB converter, which actually handles the signal for the controllers, which works off of OpenJVS. I may have a more in-depth video on that at a later date, but basically, think of it this way. It takes the input from an arcade board and it allows it to be used with regular controllers. And um, it actually makes it possible to play a light gun game in your house without having to have a light gun sensor board or all those sensors around your TV. And the way that we accomplish this is my wife and I are actually going to be playing this. You can say hi to everybody, babe. Hi. We're using our Wiimotes. See, I got the gold one. She's got the regular white one. And somehow the game ended up going into a RAM test, but that's okay. But um, the good part about this is the way this works is you'll see your cursor on the screen and move around the controller to move the cursor. And the trigger button on the Wiimote will work as your uh, hose button. So that opens the hose and that allows it to basically shoot the water around when you move the Wiimote. The A button is actually mapped to the um, start button. So if the guy says time is up, um, uh, do you want to continue? You just press A and you'll continue. And then the only other button that this game uses is actually mapped to plus, which is to open the uh, fog stream on the, uh, on the hose, which basically, if you've ever had one of those hoses that has one of those things that's le that, that is like a uh, thing where you pull the trigger, when you have it and it's like really wide, that's the fog stream. So... That's basically all there is when it comes to the control. So it's pretty basic and um, you'll see in the footage, uh, this, this will actually be my first two player arcade uh, video because uh, I've never had an arcade video where I could have two players before. But, oh, I see it was something with the remote that actually made it, like me moving this activated the test mode uh, that you, you you discover something new every day and it's uh, going through the RAM test again. But um, we're going to uh, get out of this test mode here and um, get into some gameplay here as we've done a full gameplay together and you'll get to see what this arcade exclusive uh, Brave Firefighters looks like when played on the original arcade board as I had showed you down here. If I can actually see, it's hard to see through the viewfinder. That's the actual Hikaru board there. No emulation is being used here. And I hear that Hikaru is emulated okay in some cases, but it's not perfect. So let's go ahead and get into some Brave Firefighters gameplay and um, see what that looks like. So um, we're going to go ahead and switch out of test mode and then get back into the gameplay and check out some Brave Firefighters. Brave Firefighters. Okay, and there's the title screen, and once we hit start here, you'll see the uh, intro of the game. 
Main Taylor possibly back in Area D. Report to Area D immediately. This is Team A1 at the scene. What a mess! This is Team A1. The first floor is already cooked. Roger. Water supply ready. Stand by. Open all hoses. Okay, I'll try my best not to, uh talk during the start story sequences, but at least in this game there actually are uh, subtitles, so there's no chance that you wouldn't be able to see what they're saying. And the good part about this is when it comes to uh, syncing the Wiimotes, if you're ever using OpenJVS, the one thing I will mention is all you have to do is go into uh, a terminal command on your Pi and uh and sync the Wiimotes under bluetooth control that's all don't do any of the tutorials that are for retro pie and using the Wiimotes as game controllers because simply enough that stuff doesn't work you just sync the, the controllers with the system then you just go to open jbs and make sure that they're activated as controllers and you're all set to go. And I just ran the generic shooting profile, and that works for this. And the good thing about this game is it. Are you all right? Mayor Taylor's still inside. Okay, stay here. The paramedics will be here soon. Let's hurry. Double time. Oh, okay. What I was saying is the good reason for this game is that. It doesn't require any uh, calibration because you can actually see your cursor on the screen. There's no time. Let's split up. You guys go around the right and put out the fire. We'll go from the left. Good luck. And the thing that's actually funny about this game is playing it with a Wiimote, you actually think to yourself, this game should have been on the Wii because it just seems like it could be a Wii game. Thank God. Hurry, evacuate. Because it actually plays so good with a Wii controller, you would almost swear it it was made for one. But um Brave Firefighters was released in 1999 in both North America and Japan. And as you can see, up to two players can play at once. And it's easy to see where you're spraying your water. Because red icon is player one, blue icon is player two. And you just move it around the screen when you have your trigger held, and that you extinguishes right? the fire. My husband's still up there! Ha, help me! Don't move! We'll be right there! Little time left! And in Japan, the only difference is this was called Shoboshi Brave Firefighters. We've got to rescue him. And no matter what I do, that man always falls. So I don't know if there's some way to save him or not, but I think he always falls. It's a scripted event. Oh, thank God! Where's my wife? She's already evacuated. She's okay. And what Sega Retro says is it uses a, a vibrating light gun controller shaped like a fire hose to provide a realistic simulation of firefighting. The debut title for the Sega Hikaru arcade system. In 1999, it had the most technologically advanced graphics of the time. It was the first game with fong shading, which was has which has since become the most common shading technique. It also was the most advanced lighting and particle fire effects of its time, and the most detailed environments of its release. And in this game, there's a lot of times you'll see these... Get him out of here! Let's go! You'll see the characters that you have to save, but I've never seen any of them actually, like, die because the fire got to them. 
So I think the only thing that'll happen is it takes away from time, which of course, as you can see, it's not like your traditional light gun shooting game. You're not gonna die, so it's not like the zombies are trying to get you or the bad guys are shooting you. It's all the time on the top of the screen that determines when you need to continue. Are you all right? Mayor Taylor's still in this room. Okay, we'll get him out. This room is gonna burn down in no time. Let's go. And the only real difference with the Japanese title screen is that it displays the three Japanese characters, the Shoboshi, and then it says Brave Firefighters, and it spaces the word fire and fighters. That's really the only difference between the two title screens. But I definitely have to say this is a very fun game, and you can actually complete this game within a half an hour. And now this is what's called your first major boss fire. There were a couple earlier in the game which had like life gauges, but this is the first major one to have like a big life gauge. And basically the way that this works is the, the fire will keep burning until you drain the life gauge. And you just have to like protect the civilian who's in the, uh, in the screen until you can get that life gauge drained. And then once it's drained, all you have to do is fully extinguish the fire. But, um, of course, as I said, I've never seen any of the civilians in the game die. Good luck. It looks like the only thing that happens is a couple seconds from your time go away every time they get hurt. So it's not like in House of the Dead where there's a character who's like, save me and the uh, and the zombies get them and they'll like give you a life bonus if you save them it's not like that but as you can see the life bar is now down and all you have to do is get a red of that fire mayor are you all right let me go my wife and daughter are still in the restaurant we'll get them out uh, mayor no come back And of course, as you can see, after stage one, uh, the mayor decides not to go and be rescued and go after his family himself. This is Team A1. We're in the living room on the second floor. We're going to go after him and continue on the second floor. Go! And of course, the whole story of this game, if you didn't see the intros video I released, is that there's a convention to re-elect Mayor Ta Taylor in the hotel, but an electrical fault in the generator caused the whole building to catch fire. And of course, now you have to save everybody in this building. And now they're saying here that a modified version of Brave Firefighters was produced by SEGA and donated to Kyoto City Disaster Prevention Center. This version of the game has a different scenario and opening movie, Japanese titles, short stages, and no time limit. Now as far as the development of this game, according to SEGA in August 1999, Brave Firefighter uses a slightly modified Naomi hardware system. And that system, of course, is called Hikaru. Uh, Hikaru incorporates the custom Sega graphics chip and possesses larger memory capacity. Are you all right? Thank you. And of course, that's compared to like the normal Naomi systems. The modifications were necessary because Brave, because in Brave Firefighters, our engineers fit, were faced with the daunting challenge of creating 3D images of fire and sprayed right? water. Taylor, went that way just now. 
which was stated by Sega's Vice President of Sales and Marketing, Barbara Joyens. If you stop and think about it, both have uh, almost infinite numbers of shape sizes and levels of opaqueness, shading, and shadows. And when you combine the two by simulating spraying water on a fire, you create an entirely different set of challenges for our game designers and engineers to overcome. Challenges that were extremely difficult, and if, and if not possible to overcome utilizing existing 3D computers, Hikaru has the horsepower to handle these demanding graphics challenges with clarity, precision, and depth. And apparently, at one point, there were plans for a home conversion of Brave Firefighters, along with Jambo Safari and Emergency Call Ambulance for release in Real Life Careers compilation for Sega Dreamcast. But unfortunately, the project was cancelled, and um, the games remained arcade exclusive. The only game that actually got a home version, to my knowledge, was Jambo Safari, but that was much later for the Wii. And honestly, as I haven't played either the arcade or home version, how are you doing? I came after the mayor, but it seems like the head cook's still in the restaurant. Don't let the kitchen catch fire. Go! And as I was saying, as I haven't played either the arcade version or the home version of Jambo Safari. I really can't say how um, accurate the Wii version would be compared to the arcade version of that game, but we'll see that in another video. And if you saw the pictures in the beginning of the video there, the um, arcade cabinet has like big fire hoses and um, the, as I mentioned earlier, the fire hose controllers would simulate like using a real fire hose. Although I have to actually say, you really feel like a real firefighter when you're playing this with the Wiimote, because you have to like move your arm around like you're really putting out a fire, so it actually is uh, a really fun game to play. And I was actually surprised that my wife seemed to really enjoy it a lot as well. I had asked her if she wanted to join me on commentary, but she's from the Philippines and she's just afraid that her English wouldn't be too good, so she just let me do this on my own. And I swear that sound that the girl makes when she's screaming sounds like a bird that's hurt. Thank you. Captain! Found the head cook. He's alright. Mayor Taylor was here. And I told him that his wife and daughter were inside. Then he went inside, alone to find them. What? Mayor Taylor's inside? Whoa! No, it spread to the kitchen. Go after it. Okay, now you're gonna finally see if you can get Mayor Taylor once we go through the kitchen here. But this is one of those games that, that's actually pretty fun to play, as I was saying, because it's a lot different than any other game you've played before. And honestly, the good thing about it is it's one of those games that doesn't require, like, a lot of precision button presses and a lot of precision, like, fighting moves or anything. And just like, say, House of the Dead and a lot of the other games that were released similar to this, it kind of has that story aspect that keep, keeps you wanting to keep playing to see what happens in the story. And, like, how this whole scenario ends. But it really is, like amazing to think this was done in 99 Found him. He's all right. and now like in stage one this is uh the mayor once again and uh, you basically have to shoot those flames on the top of the screen as your like weak spot for your boss and together with keeping the mayor safe. So, it really is one of those things you have to be careful, but as I said, the only thing that you're really going to be facing when it comes to uh, loss of life in this game is 
you just won't uh, have as much time. And when you're playing it on free play on your own arcade board, it's no big deal like how much time you're going to have left because you could just use unlimited continues and not have to worry about um, how many times you have to uh, press start again. So it's no real big deal if you have to continue too many times. But of course, just like any game I play, we tried our best to play as best as possible. And as you can see, just like in the first one, the uh, the life of the boss is now out, and um, you can now just extinguish the rest of the fire. What were you thinking? I'm sorry, but my wife and daughter. I was supposed to meet them here, but they're not here. Where, where did they go? I promise, we'll find them and get them out of there. And then that's the second stage. This is chapter 19. Found two people. The two of Roger. This is team A1. We're on our way. You be go. Hurry. Oh, okay, and then this is the final scene of the game where you have to rescue the mayor's uh, wife and daughter. And, um... Good luck. What's kind of funny about it was when he says good luck, if one person presses start and then the other one presses start after, you'll hear good luck, good luck. But what I was going to say earlier is the voices in this game are... They're all right, but they kind of have that same, like, House of the Dead type quality to them. They're not the worst voices I've heard ever in a game, but they kind of have that like over-exaggerated um, B-movie type vibe going to them. So it's like, so it's like when the mayor's like, where is my wife and daughter? So he's kind of like over-exaggerating it. They probably got like the... So as I was saying, they kind of have that like B-movie quality grade of voice acting. Sometimes they can sound pretty convincing, but compared to like stuff that are is in other shooting games, it's honestly not too bad. And you'll always hear that if you don't extinguish it as fast as the game wants you to. They'll always go, it's still burning, because you ran out of time and of course the fire hasn't gone out. But basically this game is separated into the, the three different scenarios that you've seen here. The first scene, the second scene, and the third scene. And as I said, it really is an enjoyable game and it's really different than anything I've played before and even if you have like a friend or or anyone you know who might not play a lot of video games they can really get some fun out of this as I said I was glad to see my wife had enjoyed this with me because we had just played it a couple minutes before I'm recording this commentary and what I was saying earlier is I'm kind of surprised when you look at this they were able to do this in 1999 PlayStation 2 wasn't out yet, Dreamcast was just out, Nintendo and Microsoft's offer first offerings, well, Nintendo's and N Microsoft's first offering and Nintendo's GameCube had not been released yet. So, yeah, these were quite impressive graphics at the time, which Sega was known for. And then, of course, these are the generators and... These are the Transformers, mind you, that caused the problem in the first place. About time. We're going to move upstairs and start there. Back us up. Roger. Let's go. And of course, even the background music, when you're able to hear it, it's still 
overall the sound of the water and the fire is actually pretty good. It kind of sets the atmosphere pretty well. And it does really uh, give you that like rush of adrenaline. And the one thing I definitely have to say uh, by playing this game, I think to myself, yeah, I'm just sitting here on my couch and I'm nice and comfortable shooting fire with uh, fake water hose. But I can honestly see how hard it must be to be a firefighter. And that's one thing I, I've noticed a few times. Certain things you shoot will cause a time bonus. But I've, I, I'm not sure what exactly what uh, exact things are that you need to shoot in the game. So, um, yeah, you do get some extra time here and there for shooting certain things. Like, I think one time I'd shoot a light in a chandelier and that caused it to happen. And you'll see in that scene, uh, I think the tree was shot. Let's go, move it. Time is up. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. He almost said good luck at the same time, but it was slightly off that time, if you could hear that. And this is another one of those scenes that it doesn't have like a boss fire gauge, but you kind of have to protect him. And I'm guessing when he said we're moving into the party hall, this is probably where everybody was for the gathering that you would have seen in the intro. So this is this would have been the place where all the people were. But considering if you watch that intro, there were so many people, and we probably only rescued like less than a dozen. But um, maybe the rest of them ran out or something. And one thing I always think is funny is whenever I see like the press images for this game. It shows the arcade cabinet and someone dressed in full firefighter's gear playing the game, and I'm thinking it probably would be a bit too warm for playing the uh, the game with the full firefighter's uh, outfit on. But the one thing I have to say is strange about Brave Firefighters is you'll typically only see. This is Team A1. We found people trapped inside. There's two inside. They must be the mayor's family. The hall's too dangerous, Captain. There are people still inside. Can't back out now. Let's go. Move in. You'll typically only see um, the 50-inch uh, deluxe cabinet for this one. I've never seen an actual, like, legit Brave Firefighters that was a, a CRT. No Hurry. It's still burning. And my guess would be for this... Right? My guess would be that the actual controllers use some sort of Wii-type technology. Because otherwise, it probably could not work for a um, projection screen like it does. Unless they use the whole LED array thing. And I definitely have to say that the voice acting is better than most games in this one. And now this is your last, your last uh, boss fire, if you will. The actual uh, life of the fire comes from those spikes of fire shooting out of the ground. And of course, you have to protect the mayor's daughter. And as I had said with all the other um, uh, boss battles, the only thing you really have to do is keep them from getting like hurt much or you're going to lose time. Which of course if you're, you're paying to play the game, 
would really make a difference, but as there is no um, cost when you have the game on free play, it doesn't really matter. And then, of course, that's the clearing of stage three. Or scene three. Her. She's unconscious right now, but she'll be all right. We're moving out. And, of course, that's Brave Firefighters for you. A full playthrough running on the USA version. I would imagine if the game was running in Japanese mode, instead of English subtitles, it would be Japanese subtitles. And, uh, of course, the audio would probably still be English, like a lot of these games are when they're released, even overseas. But I definitely say Brave Firefighters is a very fun game. It's very fun to play with two players especially. And uh, I would highly recommend it to any shooter fans or just any fans of kind of like unusual games that came out. And then of course you save the mayor and his family and a few other people who were completely unnamed in the game. And now this part we were supposed to enter our names, but the, the two of us like... The way that it works is you don't have a cursor, like you don't have the fire hose thing, which would have made this a little easier. And we were both desperately trying to choose our right initials, but we couldn't. But yeah, Brave Firefighters is a great game. And I highly recommend it to anybody who wants to uh, try a very unique game and a very fun game at that. But at the very end here, I'm going to throw, like, my name entry when I did it correctly in my first gameplay. Just so you can see what that looks like. But, um, yeah, this has been another Game Nexus Arcade video. And I highly recommend you give this game a try. I don't know how well it works in an emulator. And if it works alright, maybe you want to give it a try. Or track down a, um arcade that actually has the game but this has been another game nexus arcade Brave video and i'll see you later bye